And now we've arrived at our destination in the heart of the beautiful city of Lucerne. And we get right to our hotel where I provide some orientation. And welcome to Lucerne. Made it. Yeah, we made it. Here we are. <laughs> Left Italy behind. This is another great hotel. This building used to be the City Hall of Lucerne about a hundred years ago. Hmm. This is the Balance Hotel, and it's right on the River Royce. You'll see the waters on this side, and on the other side we have the Old Town, the uh, heart of the Old Town. It's a, it's a little late now, but it's time for dinner if anybody is still hungry. The restaurants, of course, are still cooking. Just head on out that away. Generally, is where you'll find the restaurants. And tomorrow morning for breakfast, it starts at seven, and it goes until eleven. So you can just take your time and uh, have breakfast whenever. After a good night's sleep, we're up the next morning for a delicious, leisurely breakfast. I'm gonna get some fruit with yogurt. Well, she just made it. She just, she just made it. Oh, it's wonderful. This buffet, I've never seen anything like it. At the end of our tour, when we get to London, when we look back upon all the different highlights, everybody points to Lucerne as one of the most beautiful experiences they've had. The food is great, the scenery is spectacular, the people are friendly. There's just absolutely nothing wrong with this place at all. That's a beautiful spot. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> and the swans outside, the view. Swan Lake. <laughs> so how do you like the hotel so far? Nice breakfast, great location. So what we'll do is, this morning, we're just going to relax. I'm going to take you on an orientation walk and show you the town. And then you can go shopping and walking around and just to enjoying yourself, go to the cafes. Now what we're gonna do is a brief orientation walk, as I said, we're gonna go see the Lion Monument, a very famous part of Lucerne. And in the process, we'll just walk through the beautiful little streets. The shops will be opening as we walk past. And you wanna look for Swiss chocolates. Swiss chocolates are the, the, one of the best things you can buy here. Either the, uh, the stuffed truffle kind, which are wonderful, or just the uh, bars of, you can take it all home, sure, no problem. No, it's not gonna melt, it'll be okay. Or the bars of chocolate. I'll show you uh, the supermarkets where you can get the bars of chocolates very cheap. And it's just as good as the uh, stuff in the tourist shops that are four times more expensive. So I'll point that out along the way. Music, yes, by, right by the Lion Monument, I'm gonna bring you to a real nice big shop that has a big variety of music boxes. I bought one there a couple months ago. Yeah, that's the other nice thing to buy here. Music boxes, watches, chocolates, cuckoo clocks, Swiss Army knives. Of course, you can buy all these things at home too, but it's more fun to buy them here. Okay, so good, let's go take a walk. We're not gonna make a lot of stops along the way, but this is uh, an interesting one since we're right here. This is our hotel, and what a beautiful building it is. It's the Balance Hotel. And as I mentioned, it used to be the city hall over 100 years ago. The building is several hundred years old, and it's been recently renovated, as you've seen, from the wonderful plumbing in your bathrooms and the beautiful interior. They've done a marvelous job with it. And you'll see the painted facade here is typical of many of the buildings in Lucerne. OK, so let's head over this way. So the town itself consists of these old medieval type streets and the little market squares. Like there's another little square and there's a cafe. That's the square of the deer. And that's a wonderful cafe to sit at in the evening. You might find some musicians strolling by as we did last year. And just a nice place to have a beer. Beer on tap is a good treat in the city. And here comes another little square here. And this has the old town hall right on the square. So here we are in another one of the, the typical little squares. Uh, it's a pretty picture right here with this old fountain. You'll find each square has a fountain, something like that. And just look behind you down the street, how pretty that view is with all the banners and the way the narrow buildings just wind down that little curved lane. And this is the river that's in front of our hotel. Now this river is, is leaving the lake. That's the drainage for the lake. It's called the River Royce. 
and it'll eventually end up in the River Rhine, and that water will be dumped into the North Sea. That's where it's heading. And the water is coming from the Lake of Lucerne, which is called the Fürwald Stattersee. We could walk straight along this busy street, but we won't. we're gonna uh, duck in and get into the quiet streets again and head for the Lion Monument, which is in this direction. I just wanna show you this as an example of the kind of little supermarket that you can shop in. Uh, this is a good place where you can buy chocolates, bars of chocolates, you know, just simple milk chocolate, solid chocolate. You don't have to get real fancy, and it makes a really good gift, it's easy to pack, and your friends at home will love it. It has Swiss cows on the front and everything. And it's about one third price when you buy it in a little supermarket like this compared to the souvenir or the chocolate shops. And here too, you know, you can get your little picnic supplies if you want to. Now there's a lot of these little markets scattered through town. You'll see them, not just this one here, but there's another five or 10 of them scattered around. There's some near the hotel. On the other hand, if you want to buy the fancy stuffed chocolates, then you go to the special chocolate shops. And we'll point those out to you also. And those are wonderful as well. And more expensive, but well worth it too. So you can go both ways on the chocolate. In a future program, we'll take you inside one of the great restaurants of town, the old Swiss house. It's famous if you want to have a traditional Swiss meal, you can come down here. And it's just near the Lion's Monument if you want to find it again. It's easy to find. And the Lion is right here. Another nice feature of Lucerne is it's a small town. Everything is within about a square mile. And the Lion Monument is on the edge of that square mile, but be sure to go and pay your respects. He's a very sad putty tat there. Look, <laughs> look at this guy. The lion, he's in pain. He's been speared. There's a spear in his side, so he's dying. The story of the Lion Monument is based on a true historical event that happened during the French Revolution back in 1789. Uh, Louis XVI was the last French king, you know, and with the storming of the Bastille, and there was battles in Paris, uh, particularly the Battle of the Tuileries. Well, the French hired a lot of Swiss mercenary guards because the French king couldn't rely on his old soldiers anymore because the soldiers were turning against the French king. So he had these Swiss mercenaries helping defend him in 1789 in Paris in the Tuileries, where we'll be. Uh, our hotel is right at the Tuileries Gardens. You'll see where the event took place. And it was a mammoth battle, and almost all of the Swiss soldiers were killed in that battle. And that was 1789. The lion was carved in 1820 in commemoration of that loss, of that uh, terrible loss. It's kind of ironic that the Swiss soldiers were fighting to defend one of the last of the corrupt uh, emperors, the, the end of the old regime, really. That's the story. And so he's been carved out of solid bedrock. This is carved right into the cliff. It's, it wasn't carved in pieces and put there. It was just carved on the spot. And it's, um, it's something like 30, the lion itself is 30 feet long. It's huge. And you see that spear just tragically stuck in him, so sad. So let's take some pictures. In fact, let's take a group picture here. This is a real good spot for a group picture. And so what I'd like you all to do is take out your cameras if you want to get a shot, just like we did in Rome. Take out your camera, put it on wide angle if it's uh, adjustable and turn it on, okay? And then uh, let's bring the cameras all over to here and put them on the ground, and then we'll stand and pose for a group oh. shot. Being so polite over <laughs> here. <laughs> three more, <laughs> two more, three more. Thanks to Hugo Buring's hard work, everybody now has a group photo inside their own camera. Don't have to wait for somebody else to send a group photo to them. It'll be there at home when their pictures are developed. And we've taken lots of pictures on this trip. It's a photo frenzy. Along with shooting the video, I also shoot lots of slides when we travel and later put on multimedia shows with slides and video. And Hugo Buring has been a great help in photographing the video on this trip as well. Because they really have the widest selection and variety, and the prices here are about the same as what you'll pay in the town. It's pretty much the same prices everywhere. So it's more a question of variety and selection 
And since this really is about the biggest gift shop you'll see, uh, it's worth spending 10, or 10 minutes, 15 minutes in here. Hear that bell. You'll find several dozen gift shops in Lucerne. Then they all have similar kinds of goods. There's the cuckoo clocks and the little ceramic figures and the Swiss Army knives. This shop is a particularly large one. It's located just next to the Lion Monument, so it's quite convenient to find it. Great earrings. Yeah, <laughs> magnets. Oh, good. You found them. Right? Yeah. The nice ones? They're hard to find. Yeah, they got some. But see, this store's big. Like yeah. Switzerland. That's what it's got to say. Yeah, Lucerne. And they wrap it up for you. <laughs> Surrounded by the lake and the river and some of the most gorgeous drop-dead scenery you'll ever experience anywhere in your life. The River Royce begins here for it exits from the Lake of Lucerne and flows right through the middle of town with a rather swift current. After all, this is the only drainage for a very large lake that's nearly 30 miles long. The Swiss managed to keep the lake at a constant level by manipulating the size of this dam that's formed at the beginning of the River Royce. This is so the lake will always be at the right level for boating and for all the docks and the various waterside activities, one of which is sitting at a cafe in the outdoor beautiful Swiss air. The majestic swans add a graceful note to the atmosphere of the lakefront. The old Keppelbrucke wooden bridge. We're here with the Hawaii Geographic Society on our annual tour of Europe. We stay in Lucerne for three days which gives us a good chance to see the place from top to bottom. We do a lot of walking tours, and we have a day for going up to the mountains, which is what we'll be doing today. First, I'll give you and our group a brief lakefront orientation. And Vicky, the casino is uh, just down this way, about a quarter mile. You'll see it, there's a big sign out front, casino and everything, oh, oh, yeah. can't miss it. And the same building has got uh, a supper club with the music and dance shows too, oh. so that's kind of fun as well, the casino. Much be this one. Yeah, sure, it's a big building, you can't miss it, you just walk right down the lake. It looks like autumn in New England here, the way these leaves are turning yeah. color. There's a beautiful promenade, it's the key along the lake of Lucerne. Now at sunrise, it's even more extraordinarily beautiful. I was telling you, about 6.30 in the morning, you come right along here. It's one of the most beautiful events of the entire tour. You can see Mount Pilatus in the background, this huge mountain. That's one of the symbols of Lucerne, Mount Pilatus. You could take a cable car up there, but there's no snow there at this time of year. That's why Titlis is more interesting, because it has the snow. But if you just want a nice view of Lucerne, you go up to Mount Pilatus or you can go up Mount Rigi, which is on the other side. We'll be taking you up Mount Rigi and Mount Pilatus in some future episodes of World Traveler. But in this program, we'll be taking you up to the exciting mountaintop of Mount Titlis, which is covered in snow for it's a glacier. So all year round, you can go up and play in the white stuff. That's coming up shortly in today's episode of World Traveler. But first, we'll continue our strolls along the lake shore and soak in some more of its everlasting beauty. I like, I like right here. This it's is good. pretty, huh? Yeah? Yeah, Look at the swans really down really here. Good. One of the more interesting spots to hang out and enjoy the visuals is right here at the Keppelbrücke. Seems that this is where all the swans and the young swanlings flock for their food. Oh, this is beautiful, man. This is a city. This is a city. <laughs> Hey, that's what you said about Venice now. Wait no, a minute. no, no, no. <laughs> I like this one too. <laughs> it's always a great highlight of the trip. Of course, one of the most interesting things you can do while you're traveling is enjoy a fine meal. In this case, we're at the Wildenmann restaurant, which specializes in wild game. They have wild boar, as well as vegetarian entrees, if you wish. And there's a standard range of entrees, but it's the venison, and the pheasant and the wild boar that's really going to catch your fancy. We didn't leave anything left behind on those plates at the Wildenmann restaurant. It's located right in the old town near the banks of the river. Here's an ancient apothecary. Dates back proudly to the 14th century. Certainly these old buildings are one of the main attractions of Lucerne for the old town dates back largely three and four hundred years and it's beautifully maintained. Another of the greatest attractions of this city and of this country 
are the delicious rich chocolates, especially the stuffed chocolates. This is rum, uh -huh. orange, mm -hmm. whiskey, champagne, mm -hmm. Williams, mm -hmm. hazelnuts, mm -hmm. almond, darkened milk, mm -hmm. almond, and nougat. Mm -hmm. That's plain, that's a cherry fruit inside, mm. that's a cherry flavor, that's a walnut, that's peach flavor, and this is Crunchyroll flavor. That's coffee and cherries, coconuts, white, nougat darkened milk. Mm -hmm. LED is in truffle, that's in truffle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can you put them um, in a nice box? Can you pack some? Yeah. For Mish? Okay. Um, we have them here. Mm -hmm. This is the 200 grams. It's mm -hmm. 13 francs. That's $10. 13 francs. francs. White. Mm -hmm. Williams. Mm -hmm. Milk. Mm -hmm. Dark. Hazelnuts and the small cherries inside. Okay. That's champagne. That's whiskey. Mm -hmm. In the champagne is a small um, Grand Marnier. Uh -huh. That's rum. This is Cointreau. Mm -hmm. That's peach. That's cherries. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. How about this mm -hmm. here, the swirl? And this is a cherry fruit. Yeah. Das ist Handarbeit und wird in Luzern gemacht. Und das ist immer frisch. Wir haben alle drei Tage frische Ware. Mhm. Vor wie vielen Jahren arbeiten Sie hier? Ich bin jetzt schon 20 Jahre. 20 Jahre ja. in ja. dieser Shop. Ja. Wow. ja, 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 ja. Sie, mhm. danke schön. Wunderbar. Bis später. Herzlichen Dank. Mm -hmm. Bitte sehen. Bitte sehen. There are about a half a dozen of these fancy boutique chocolate shops in town, with the River Royce running right through the middle of town. The sweeping panorama of the old town shows Lucerne at its most beautiful. Here along the shores of the river and the shores of the lakefront. Another view of the Keppelbrücke covered wooden bridge. Just a block away, you'll find the heart of the shopping district. And one of the most important shops in town is Bucherer. It's a very large watch store. It's the main headquarters of this internationally famous company, Bucherer. And they sell inexpensive swatches or right up to the very most expensive Pate Philippe and everything in between. You can buy swatches at home, but in Switzerland they've got perhaps the greatest selection you'll ever see in the world, and of course there's the cuckoo clock. And they also sell souvenirs and some jewelry inside Bucher. Now you might get a little hungry in the midst of all the shopping, and one of the great treats is pastries. Um, oh, we went to a tea room. We mm -hmm. had uh, tea and wonderful desserts, and I had to bring one home for a midnight snack. I could have brought more, but... Oh. It's a walnut cake. Oh, it does not look nice. We had just about everything else, so... <laughs> this is the one I didn't try. So. It must have been very good. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> While in Lucerne, we always stay at the Balance Hotel, which is located right on the water here on the River Royce. And from your room, you'll have a spectacular view of the heart of town, looking down on the river and the old Keppelbrücke. And many of the rooms have balconies where you can sit out and enjoy the sights. You could order room service or you can pack your own little picnic supplies and have a snack on your lanai. Cheese, bread, a little bit of wine, some reading, and what a setting. Voila, the perfect afternoon. The sunsets and sunrises are often beautiful here in Lucerne with the lakefront setting and the mountain backdrop. and you step outside and cross the street 
and you find yourself magically transported back to the old town of Lucerne. But even here, there's the trappings of the modern. There's computers, there's postmodern furniture. These are, after all, late 20th century people, highly educated, compassionate, caring, sharing people. And what a town. You've got entertainment in the streets. You've got clothing on sale. You've got friendly doggies guarding the shop, meeting with their friends. A lot of sidewalk cafes and sweet treats to eat everywhere. You might be surprised at how modern the fashions are in these boutiques and how reasonable the prices, especially if you're looking for cotton clothing for in the summertime and late summer, they're all marked down. Of course, you'll find watches everywhere and you'll find wine shops to check out. Now, Swiss wine is not very common in America but it's very drinkable, quite delicious. <laughs> the most of grapes that we have is um, Chasla. You know, the Chasla is this uh, typical Swiss uh, grape for the um, wonderful white wine. And uh, you can uh, mm -hmm. drink the wine maybe two or three years not long. Uh, you know. mm -hmm. Just drink it young, yeah, yeah. young and fresh. Yes. Mm -hmm. The main reason you don't see Swiss wine in America is they don't make very much of it. This is, after all, a rather small country. Small, but full of variety and contrast. It's just about 200 miles from top to bottom in Switzerland, and Lucerne is located pretty much in the center. There's a variety of souvenirs you can bring home. Of course, the cuckoo clock is the most famous one. It comes in all price ranges, wristwatches, designer clothing, chocolates, anything that says Lucerne or Switzerland on it makes a good souvenir to bring home. And then of course there's the Swiss Army knife, perhaps the most practical of all tourist souvenirs. If you buy one, you'll certainly end up using it pretty often. The old town is one big shopping mall, but so much more attractive than an American style shopping center. This is, after all, a real village, and it has a lot of historic character. If you're looking for any sort of ice skates or hiking clothes, Switzerland is a great place to shop. Or if you're interested in backpacks, they have a tremendous selection here. I purchased a backpack in this store, and I've been very happy with it ever since. One of the main squares in the heart of town. There's cafes around it. You can sit back and have a drink or have a meal. The swans of Lucerne are one of the main visual attractions of this city. They are so graceful. And there's ducks no, and really? pigeons and all kinds of water birds nearby.